What's up, guys? Welcome back to the podcast. Um, I'm your host, Rafael Espinoza, and I got my brother here, Miguel Espinoza. What's up, guys? <laughs> uh, my brother's not here today. Uh, he was feeling sick. So uh, it'll be a single pod or a solo pod with Matias as my co-host. Matias Vinum, welcome back, bro. Thank you, bro. Thank you, bro. <laughs> uh, today's topic, as we have our international here, um, we're going to speak on internationals coming um, to the U.S. to play college soccer, um, kind of get a little bit, uh, go into that a little bit. But before that, um, let's get a little bit of an update on where you're at now. I don't, I don't when did we have you on? Was that, was that during season, after season? I think it was right after season. Was, it was after season? Yeah. I think oh, it was so after. they already know that we're like yeah. Big West champs and yeah. all that stuff. They should know oh, that. They should know that. that. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, okay, well then, give us a little bit. What, what is 2024 for you? Basically the same position as I was last year. I'm going to be with UCI now, mm -hmm. this year. Uh, it's my senior year, so it's going to be my last. So it's a very important one. And mm -hmm. then, yeah, we'll, we'll see how it goes and then take it from there. Take it from the season. You coming from Norway. First, why did you, why did you think or when did the idea of going um, to the U.S. to play college soccer, when did that first like hit your radar? So, uh, as I told you before, uh, I was looking for a, like, for a club or for somewhere to go. Mm -hmm. um, that was a decent level. And I didn't know if I wanted to re-sign where I was or if I wanted to get a new adventure. So I was kind of like open for anything, mm -hmm. just looking. And then my family went to a family vacation in Miami. And while I was in Miami, I got this agent hitting me up saying that, oh, like if you, like we are an agency that brings people to the US to play college. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a good level, blah, 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 blah. Like, let me know. I was like, nah, I don't. I don't want to go to the U.S. Yeah. So I kind of just, just dropped it, told him I'm not interested. Mm. And then I um, uh, was done with that vacation and I thought about it many times. Like, you know, the cold in Norway is freezing, everything like that. Then we were training. I was like, wow, it would be, be amazing to play somewhere kind of tropical, somewhere mm. where it's hot, somewhere where you like, you can actually get your reps in. Like sometimes yeah. I would be in my basement getting touches because it's so cold outside. Yeah. So yeah, I, like I thought about it a little bit, talked to my dad, talked to my parents, did some research, searched like the level, like what type of players are playing college. And I got a, like what I found was that a lot of people from big academies, like United Academy, City Academy, uh -huh. they play for the best D1 colleges. Uh, or the people that's not good enough for the academy. They right. play for. And they're still quality players. Right. Uh, and I saw that there was a lot of people like that who play college. So I thought about it. I made a highlight video. Uh, I sent it out with my agent. And yeah, I didn't know anything about the US. Mm -hmm. And then I started talking to coaches from different colleges. I started to talk to coaches from different like D1, D2, NIA, different types of levels as well and I could kind of get an understanding of where I want to be and like trying to go pro is important for me that it's I'm not going somewhere where it's just kick and run yeah and where it's just like okay we're a very good team but we don't play football we just right. care about winning like I want to develop I want to yeah. be better uh, so I'm ready to play pro and yeah and then I talked to UCI and it just sounded like everything that the coach told me seemed I don't want to be like disrespectful, but it seemed more professional, even more professional than the environment I was already in. Mm -hmm. And I was in a semi-pro professional, yeah. as you know. So a semi-pro level. Yeah. So I thought it sounded better. It sounded like a great opportunity. And then I kind of just went for it, just took a chance. Like I had no idea. I've never yeah. seen football before. Like I haven't, I haven't even, at that time, I haven't even watched an MLS game. I didn't yeah. know. I just went for it. What were people's view on that? If you, if like, the, I've spoken to um, people, or I say people is one guy <laughs> from England, and um, his uh, his view on it. He's when when because um, basically his story was that he was. I mean, he spoke to the guy too. He yeah. was at the United Academy, yeah. and then um, he said like as 
growing up there, it was kind of like if you got invited to like during the week to this one scrimmage, um, like a showcase scrimmage, where there's just a bunch of like D1 colleges there watching, you knew that you were getting you were getting cut from the academy, and like everyone there was kind of like they they viewed going to college. Um, as like your career in soccer is over yeah like quitting you're right like yeah. that that's just like okay now you need to focus on your education like because yeah. you're you're there's nothing in soccer anymore yeah um it was like did people like or did you kind of have that realization that some um people viewed college that way like if you go to college you're like your career is over yeah i had to i had to uh have a lot of discussions with people and i had to like i talked to a lot of people about it yeah like me leaving when i told them and I, like, as I told you before as well, the biggest, the one that probably made me the most unsure if it was the right choice or not, was when I sat down uh, to renew my contract uh -huh. with the coaches. Uh, and we talked and they were like, yeah, we want you to resign for two more years. Uh, it's gonna be an amateur contract, no money involved, nothing, mm -hmm. but you're still gonna be at this level, which is a really good level in Norway. And, you're gonna get a lot of playing time. And right. We're happy with what you've been doing, and you're just gonna play more and more and more. And yeah. you're most like you're gonna, hopefully, you're gonna be a starter. Right. That was the goal. And then I tell them like, um, like uh -huh. after being a third, fourth center back, fourth center back, third center back, uh -huh. and then I'm just sitting there and I have to tell them like, yeah, you know what? Like I actually think I'm gonna decline this offer. Yeah. Like I'm not. We sat like this, me and the coach, and I was like, no, I, I don't think I'm gonna do it. And the mm -hmm. contract was there and everything. Yeah. And he got the biggest shock ever. Mm. And the way he reacted wasn't like, oh yeah, like that sounds like a good. Yeah. You know? It was like, why? Why would you why would you do that? And I just said, no, I think it's good for me. And and then it's like, oh, you know that that's not a good level. Yeah. Like the level is gonna drop and everything. And I was like, oh, I don't know. Like I talked to a few people and it seems yeah. pretty legit. And it seems like if you do well in college, like there's opportunities for you after. Mm. It was like now, and then we had an assistant coach who had been, I don't know, he had gone to some coaching badge or whatever in the US. Yeah. And he told me the level was so bad. My God, like you're ruining everything. And then they just ended up getting mad at me and being like, yeah, oh, like kind of like screw you then. Like we, right. we don't need you. Like we don't want you anyways. Right. <laughs> after and I just I, offered you a contract. After I offered I don't want me you a contract, anymore. and I was like, okay, like fine. And then we talked a little bit and we ended being okay. Uh huh. But I just was like, okay, now I actually don't know. Because now I declined. Yeah. So now I don't have a club. Yeah. And I hadn't signed anywhere at that point. And I was like, oh, sh like I actually took big chances. Yeah. Now. Like, I have nothing. What if it doesn't work out? Yeah. And then I think two weeks later, I got to sign all the papers with UCI. And uh, so I had a club. Even hearing that your head coach, your assistant coach saying that the, and the assistant coach having experienced it going to like a, coaching um training i guess um like him telling you the levels of shit like what made you still want to do it like like it was to me it, it would have been easier for you to be like to listen to everybody and be like yeah you're right like this is like especially when it's like something like they're not just making like little comments they're saying like you're gonna ruin your career it's like it's over like, yeah. uh, like what made you still want to do it? No, I was, uh, I've always been a guy who likes to challenge myself. Uh -huh. And I've always been a guy who wants to develop and want to take risk. Like I don't, I'm not where I'm at because I've been doing what everyone told me to. Yeah. Like even when I got to that level, I got to that level because I did what people. Because people said you couldn't get to that They level. said yeah. I couldn't, they yeah. said I was too bad. They said, yeah. hey, there's no point of going to trials. And I did anyways, and I got to that level. Yeah. And at that time, I felt like I'd been there for three years. First year, I didn't play for the mm. first team. And it's a high level, so I get it. I was 17, everything yeah. is fine. Next year, I got a few more games, like a few games, where I came in the last minutes and stuff. Yeah. And then that season that, uh, that I just played at that time, I felt I should have played everything. I felt, okay, I'm ready. Like, I'm confident. I feel good in training. Like, yeah. I, I didn't see any reason why I wouldn't play. And some games they put me on striker, and I played striker because our striker was injured. That's and I was like, "What's going on now? Like yeah. now I'm just getting used as like a yeah. oh like we just need someone here, just cover yeah. cover up here." And I just felt kind of like like not valued, you know. Mm -hmm. When you have people that don't value you, you don't want to play there. Right. 
Yeah. And that was also one of the reasons why I thought, okay, let me try try something new where maybe yeah. I can get a fresh start and hopefully be play 90 minutes every game. Right. Because that's also going to help your development massively, playing a lot. Okay, so now that you're here, or like, and you've been here for, what, three years now? Yeah. Three years. Yeah. Is the level that much worse than it is, like, than the experience in Europe is? Or I mean, well, of course, like, you can't necessarily compare it too much with, like, the the pro level, mm -hmm. but um, because people are saying it's like it, the, the level is bad and they're making it sound like it's like it's it's below amateur, you know, like now that you're here, you've experienced it, what is like? I'm going to be completely honest. I think the best teams in D1, mm -hmm. like D1 is a, a huge variety of level, yeah. level yeah. and you know that, yeah. but I think the best teams I don't know, like top 10, top 20, yeah. are really good teams. Yeah. Like that is good teams, good quality players. And then I think you have the MLS, which I don't know, you can say it's good, you can say it's not good, but I mean, like you have Messi, it's a fun, yeah. fun yeah. league, yeah. really cool league. Then you have the USL Championship, which I'm now a player against a few teams there yeah. and know a lot of players who play there. And I think that's a very good level as well, yeah. comparing that to Norway. And I think... This is when you start from the USL Championship and the best D1 teams. This is when you start getting complicated in the US. Right. Because then you don't really have a real league system. So for me, it's like you can find the quality players in USL League 1, in NISA, mm -hmm. in USL League 2. But overall, the level is lower than a lot of the levels in Norway. Right. Depending on what level. So I would say, for example, like... You go to, since there's no real structure, I would say that it's like the MLS is the top level. Mm -hmm. And just correct me if I'm wrong, but the MLS, top level. And then you have the USL Championship. Yeah. And for me, those are the ones that are like quality. Yeah. Like if you ask me, those are the quality levels. Under there, it's very, it depends. Like you have, as I told you, like good you said League One teams, mm. good USA League Two, good Nisa teams. It just, it's kind of, I feel like they are a little bit up, uh, below USL Championship and MLS when it comes to maybe funding, yeah. the money, like the resources you're putting into it. Yeah. So, of course, it's going to be a little drop off because yeah. the best players are not going right. to be able to go. So, yeah, I think, I think it's mainly the structure is the issue here. Yeah. Mainly the structure. Yeah. Because it shouldn't be that, uh, D1 college team can beat a USL championship team. Yeah. Like that shouldn't happen. Yeah. But it can because yeah. there's so like so many good players in college. You start to see like the top uh, D1 schools compete against like top USL championship teams. Like there's like actual like it's like a very comparative like level I feel. Mm -hmm. And um, but like you said, there's also those D1s where you're just kind of like. It's, Man, like you know, D2 schools are beating, like can can easily compete and beat you, you know, like it, it's just, so there is a, I feel like in, but bec I also think it's because of like how young you can be in the college system. It's yeah. a lot more young, it's a lot younger, just like the MLS Next now, it's like known to be a younger uh, pro league because of the structure, the, how it's meant to be. It's the same with the college, that's how it's meant to be. It's a little bit younger. You see like the, in the pro, level it's you have experience on there so the level is going to be higher um but that's why i like i feel like too many people speak out of ignorance when it comes to the u.s or when it comes to let's just keep it college soccer when it comes to college soccer i think it's like too much too too much of a generalization like oh the, the, it sucks They're like oh you're gonna like your career is gonna be over i don't i don't see i i, I feel like the narrative now is changing though yeah, uh, I, I, I want to say that I agree. And I think what I think is interesting is that I think this goes both ways. Mm. I think it's so interesting to hear top D1 college players or pl really good players in D1 saying, oh, I would go fifth division Germany. Mm. Why would you go? Like, okay, it's, I get it. It's good level. Mm. And I mean, fourth division Germany is really good. From there, you start like talking yeah. level, but still, I'm like, why would you go fifth division Germany and not USL Championship? Mm. For me, there's USL Championship is better. Mm. My personal opinion, and I know people gonna be like, oh, what are you talking about? Uh. But for me, that's ignorance. 
because mm. you haven't been, you haven't seen the levels. Right. You, you just, haven't compared it. You're just talking about, European oh, like football, man. Europe. Yeah. You need to go to Europe to like have right. a good career. That's where the best teams are. Yeah, but what level in Europe compared to the best level series? Mm -hmm. Like, there needs to be a, um, like I p think people need a little reality check on how good the U.S. is, and as you see as well, like D1 college system. Uh, for example, let's just use UCI since we both play there. Yeah, it's like the structure is amazing, like the gym, like the food you get, yeah, the yeah. facilities. It's like as professional as you could probably. Where I played yeah. second division Norway, it was n like we had less than half of that. Yeah, and, and it, what's crazy is that UCI is like, I mean, it's starting to like I'm. Like it's starting to pick up a lot more in, in terms of like the training room and all that stuff. Like it's more like higher end equipment coming through. But like we're not even like we're not even known to, for being like having like the best setup. Like bro, you see like Clemson and you yeah. see their setup. Yeah. That's crazy. That's crazy. That's like so you start seeing those in the D one level mm -hmm. and like and then of course there's some that like don't even have very like proper locker rooms or whatever. Like it it, it varies, but like. It, like yeah, like there is that professionalism in um, college soccer. It's just the only aspect that that changes is that you have to go to school. Yeah, like that's like the really biggest difference. But yeah, this yeah, like you're, like at UCI, the setup was like now not being there and that and um, trialing with different pro teams. Um, seeing what their setups are is like nowhere in comparison. Yeah. Of course, I'm like trialing with lower league teams, but um, even like I, my experience at OCSC, their facility does not compare. Mm. I mean, of course, they have a better stadium, but it's, it's not even their stadium. It's a city stadium, but um, um, it, it like does not compare with what UCI has set up and like what other like D1 facilities uh, or other D1 programs like what their setups are like. So yeah, it's just I do yeah I think there is a ignorance on the topic. There is like there or people speak out of ignorance on the topic and like you like yeah like I think there is like a overrated aspect on uh, European football mm -hmm. in terms of like the lower leagues. I would say lower leagues, yeah. yeah. And then there's like an underrated aspect to football here top in the leagues. U.S. in the top in the top leagues, and I would consider D1 college as being one of, like a top league here. Yeah, and also top I, amateur league, I guess. Also, yeah. I think from like I've just been here three years, and from when I came here to now, like three years later, the level I think the level is already higher. Mm -hmm. Like you see, we when you play like the teammates we play with, yeah, no disrespect, but like. It's, it's yeah. more serious all of yeah. a sudden. It's more like, oh, like people really want to be good. It's like people who are really like, trained hard and have really good quality. Yeah. And then you also see other teams that we play against. Like, oh, all of a sudden you have this guy getting drafted to the MLS. Yeah. And he's not even on the bench. He's starting. Yeah. And it's like, oh, shit, this isn't happening with my... Like my first year, that didn't happen. Yeah. And now it's way more you go from college and you go straight into a team, a good team. Yeah. And for me, that's, that just shows the quality. Mm -hmm. And I think, but that's the problem, is too big of a gap between the D1 teams. Right. There's too much, like the best D1 team versus the worst is miles yeah. so different. Miles different. So Yeah, the, the consistency throughout the league isn't, yeah. isn't quite there. It's not. What advice right now, so we can, we can wrap up this topic, what advice would you give a young international right now who... Is considering it, considering going college, but has his has his, like has his like resistance, his hesitancies because of the what people think about it. I think it's very depending on the situation. Mm. Very depending on the situation. Like, are you a guy who are in academy? Are you in I don't know a Premier League academy? Are you in mm. a big Norwegian? Are you a big German? Stuff like that. And are you playing? Mm -hmm. If all of that, if all of those tick your boxes, you're probably not even considering, considering it, college. Right. So for the more realistic, the people who, who are not playing as much as they want, they want a different experience, maybe they want a degree on the side, mm. whatever the case might be, going to college is not career ending. Career ending. It's yeah. the opportunities, the connections you build outside of football, in mm. football. If you perform the, the amount of attention you get mm. compared to being in Europe, it's 
I think it's something you should consider, but mm -hmm. I think do your research uh, mm. for like whatever, where you're going, like are you signing USL Championship, MLS, or are you looking at colleges, stuff like that, mm. going to the US. So just check the teams, see if that's something you would really want to do. But I believe there's a lot of opportunities here. Yeah. And also football is a short career. Mm -hmm. And to be honest, the connections you build in the US are probably going to help you the rest of your life. Mm. I really believe so. I think when I'm done with football, the people I'm going to talk to, the stuff I'm going to do is going to be highly related to the US. And I've only been here three years. Yeah. So that's actually crazy. Yeah. Well, yeah, no, I, I, and I just to like piggyback off that a little bit, I would, yeah, but you said like, do your research and like, like you did, you had, and just to keep it quick, like you had an option to play in Florida, was it Florida, right? Florida, yeah. And then you had the option to play in California, I think two, two great states to, to go, uh, to go to from Norway, but, um, you ultimately chose UCI because of the coach, because of the playing style. Of course, location played a big factor. So guys who are thinking to, to relocate and play college, like do that, like do that extensive research, have that, have those conversations. Don't just pick the first guy who has interest in you, the first coach who, who's interested in this talk. Like everyone's gonna be talking like all that hype. And like, I think the, 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 uh, the first coach was like telling you how like the team's gonna be so like made around you or something like that yeah. along those lines. It's like it sounds really good, but then you start like, seeing like their playing style and watch the games, all that stuff, just because it's a big move. It's, it's a, a big, big move, big but then move. again, that's a, like very short. That's just, I want to say that if it doesn't work out, you can always go, go back. back yeah. Like people are acting like your whole life is done. Yeah. If you go, if I came here and I didn't like it, okay, I go back to and Norway. And you see plenty of people doing that too. People do yeah. that all the time. You go back to Norway, you start off at whatever level you played or Whatever, whoever wants you, uh -huh. and you go from there again. Like, your career is not over. I think that was well said. Um, you have anything else? Are no, you good? No, I think that's, yeah. that's good. Well, that was uh, another uh, solo pod. Um, I would ask if you've got all the way through here, uh, first like and comment. And in the comments, uh, give us some topics to, to cover because I'm, I'm, I'm running out of topics, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like going to chat GBT and trying to figure shit out. But uh, yeah. Follow us on Instagram, without a doubt, underscore uh, athletics. You can follow Matias at Matias underscore Ulum. Ulum is with a J. J-U-L-L-M. Exactly. L-U-M, yeah. All right. Thank you, guys.